Hey, how you guys doing today? My name is Colin Osborne. Are you a small business owner or someone who's starting out in the trades field and you're looking at how to build your clientele and start an online business in this specific era? Well, stay tuned. I'm going to be showing you the exact step-by-step -step process in order to get a live automated website and also a marketing system for your business, it being automated so you don't have to touch it anymore and being able to walk out to the ecosystem and network with people while having a database that slowly collects leads for your business and markets them um, over time. All right, let's get into it. So uh, just wanted to introduce myself again, Colin Osborne. And if you haven't had a chance already, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Um, technology at work. This is where we just talk about uh, technology at work in the, this digital era. Uh, so I go from explaining web development, social media marketing, and and really how to just apply um, technology to the common person so that they understand that it's not that hard to get on the internet and promote their business. And, and you don't have to hire a crazy amount of employees to be able to do it. Um, so anyways, First thing that we're going to be talking about is how to start an online business. And the first thing we'll be doing is talking about the brand. And the brand is very, very essential because that is how people recognize you as a business owner. So the reason why I started on my company website, which is Ozlon, is because I just wanted to give you guys an idea of exactly what a standard website should look like, just in terms of understanding uh, that the website is very, very specific to what we're offering. We offer websites, we build websites. Uh, anyone who comes on the website will know that. And for any small business owner, I recommend not providing a customer with a whole bunch of, like a whole service window of services, uh, you know, sticking to the main three, just so that people understand that that's what you're good at doing. It's very, very essential to um, uh, getting more clients to understand what you do and offer. Uh, so, um, part of creating a brand we're going to start out with is by, um, buying a domain name. And first thing to do is move over to the namecheap.com website where I'll show you again, I've already showed you people in uh, previous videos I've created how to purchase a domain name, but I think it's very important that, um, those steps are are very ingrained in the sand when we because that's the very you know framework of your website. Anyways, one second. All right, so here we have namecheap.com. This is just a domain registrar and a place where you can easily grab domain names for very, very cheap. Namecheap. I think it's the best way to describe it. And I'm just gonna try to do a straight line process. It's very simple. If I'm a plumber and you know I would do Colin Osborne plumbing, um, or if you're going into, you know, business with your brother, Colin Os Col Osborne brothers plumbing. Um, if you're going into, you know, business with your partner, like who's a, a friend, maybe, you know, maybe put slam your last names together. And, um, you know, I remember when I had a business partner of mine and we wanted to create a company called, a and O Enterprises, which essentially would have been a like um, private investment firm or private equity, I, b I believe is what we were trying to do. But uh, we still need obviously more uh, background and licensing and experiences for that. But you get my point. It's very easy to come up with a name nowadays just because it's all about you. So if I was a landscaper and I wanted to be, uh, let's let's just name a flower, um, Peony. Peony, I think that's the name of it. Peony, I'm doing a flower landscaping. Let's see what shows up. So we got Peony Landscape Land. We got peonylandscaping.com. So we can have the name of a flower and then also the name of landscaping.com. And what the, and, and everything is, and I'm going to talk about this later on in, um, the get a website portion, but understanding that your domain name is going to, is, is the first part of setting yourself up for success. Your domain name is, it could be, it have a, your city in it. If you want to 
pigeonhole your business in a specific city. Um, but that would also help SEO wise because with SEO, there's the UMAC principle, URL metadata, anchor text content, and understanding that all of these four things do matter when it comes to being high up on the uh, ranking of Google. Ranking meaning being on page one. That's a just an SEO term that SEO um, warriors like myself use. Uh, I was an OMG machines um, graduate, and it's basically like the Harvard of SEO. But um, but yeah. Anyway, so exact match domain or having a, you know something that a lot like aligns with your industry is going to be very essential to your. Um, future because it's going to help it's going to be a lot easier for you to be on page one all right so after you have purchased your domain name i'm just going to quickly log on so i can show you the back end uh but you're going to be purchasing hosting and there's multitudes of uh hosting companies that you can use the one that i'm going to be using which is more of an all-in-one marketing platform it's called go high level and i have my company specifically on that platform as well and it hosts my website all my contacts um, my social media is integrated and i post from there i send out all my newsletters from that one platform as well and i'm going to be showing you exactly how to do all of that stuff from here after we go from the domain you know, we just wanted to explain to you how easy it is to get started and get your name out there. But anyway, so once I'm going to hop into my account. So 1Password. And a nice part about 1Password is no one can really see unless you're like a primetime hacker. And in that case, you're probably going to steal my shit anyways. Um, but with 1Password, it essentially provides you with the ability not... Um, I can share passwords and without actually sharing the actual password i'd be giving them access like if i wanted to share a password with a friend i could share a link and someone would click on that link and they i may just have it so that they can't see it but they could copy it to like a password um just like i did copy it to a credentials form just like i did without actually seeing the password which is pretty cool in this day and era. But anyways, back to the subject. So imagine this is peony landscaping.com right here. And I just in like my previous video, I'm just going to quickly go over this, but you push the, you, uh, you get Cloudflare and I'll show you what that website looks like real quick. Oops. So Cloudflare is essentially just an SSL certificate. It's this little lock button um, that honestly you need in order to like be recommended on Google. I do see sometimes where there are websites that find their way on page one, but it's not very, very, but that don't have an a, a SSL certificate, but it's very, very rare, especially in this day and era. Um, but anyways, uh, I'm not going to necessarily go into it because there's previous videos on how you can sign. It's very straightforward. You sign up for an SSL certificate and then you um, uh, then you we're going to essentially point it to the hosting platform, which is go high level. So in this portion, I'm going to be showing you guys a pest control website. And essentially, this is just a demo website just to provide you with an idea of how simple it is to really get started. The nice part about Go High Level is they provide you with a lot of templates to get started and you can customize it to your liking. Um, now, the beautiful part about that is it's a very drag and drop situation. So it's it, the common person, if you've it, you know gone to high school and been in any computer class, or if you have an iPhone, which I feel like everyone does, or a Samsung, you should know how to be able to put, you know, little things to, together. And it's relatively simple and should not take anyone really that long to do. And frankly, you don't need to have a very 
like dynamic page that's wowing. I think a lot of business owners that I know try to put a whole bunch of stuff on the page when in reality, you just need to first position yourself as the expert at that one thing. If I'm a landscaper, I'm good at mowing lawns. And if you want to ask me about anything else that I'm good at, then we could have that conversation after I've mowed your lawn. In my opinion, that's a better way to go about it because then I can get consistent reoccurring customers that way that are like, Colin Osborne's good at mowing lawns or Colin Osborne's good at, um, you know, unclogging my toilets or whatever the case it is. If you're a plumber, landscaper, photographer, I, I know one of my photographer friends literally t still to this day operates uh, sending out Venmo, um, you know, requests with a, a website that, and you know, is is a very dynamic, but not necessarily getting straight to the point. Anyways, uh, so we've talked about buying a domain name, getting hosting for your domain. The next thing would be getting a cool logo and adding it to the website. I'm not going to go into detail about the dynamics of a logo, but I'm going to provide you guys with just two options in terms of doing it yourself and then getting someone to do it for $5. And there's going to be a really cool, simple way of how you can do that um, right now. Okay, so if you guys haven't heard of this already, there's a website called Canva. And essentially, this is like a all-in-one marketing platform for you to be able to create your own content that is visually appealing and you don't necessarily have to have that much of a creative background to be able to do it. There's a lot of template based things that you can take with some inspiration that allow you to uh, not only create logos, but social media content and create it for up to 30. I mean, not up, but you can create content out for 30 days and they provide you with a lot of information on learning, like how to make how to make a video and, you know, designing with fonts and stuff like that, as well as when you're creating your social media posts, like Facebook and Instagram, you can, it recommends the fonts for you to use, but let's just hop in there. Specifically, we're talking about a logo. Let's do logo plumber. Okay. Right here. Look at this handsome guy right here. You know, we can click on this one. And remembering that with your brand, you have to also have a, you know, color coding and make sure some, making sure it's something that stands out. That's you. And you know, that, you know, that represents your business. So that really honestly is going to de determine what you want to, you know, pick as your, uh, what colors, but the nice part about it, is that there's a lot you can do with it. And I believe this is a, a an image specifically. Um, but there are a lot of things you could do with this image. A lot of, you can change a color mix, uh, make him different colors to a degree. And this one isn't necessarily completely editable um, in terms of the image, because it is an image, but there are multiple other ones like you guys saw, change the background. Um, there is a, depending on if you have uh, a, a particular color you want to steal from uh, a website, there's a Google Chrome. I'll leave that plugin at the bottom so you can see it, but it's called eyedropper. And essentially I can go on any page and then click that and click the color, drag it over the color. And then it'll tell me what the coding is for it. So now I have the coding and I could just add it to my, um, I could add it straight to my, uh, canvas right here and then and then it's easy to go now we know it's the same color but also with the fonts another thing with that is we can type whatever we need in it so let's do colin osborne plumbing change this so that it's not as janky looking my name's a little bit longer well let's just do osborne plumbing yeah there's actually a plumbing company in my neighborhood that is they're called the Osborne brothers. It's kind of tight, but anyways, plumbing. Oh, Osborne plumbing. Maybe I want to change this guy and make him, make him look like that. 
and then I'll take uh, let's make this black as well too and this one black and maybe make this white yeah I like this a little better cool all right so we have our logo now you see how simple that was very straightforward got this guy looks like a smurf but i he looks like he's gonna do a good job in my opinion guy looks like he can lay pipe now that's how that's for you do it yourselfers just go on canva type in logo and the, your industry and i guarantee you something will come up i promise you um, now we have option B, which is have someone else do it for you and do it for you really cheaply. So um, I'm in the game of saving money and, you know, limiting your business expenses to as, you know, re excuse me, reducing your limit, your business expenses um, and trying to get more for less. Not necessarily taking advantage of people, but. Like, as you can see, you can go on Canva and create it for free. And these are what these people are doing anyway. So if you wanted to pay someone to do that, then you could do it. But I'm not going to pay $500 for a logo when I could have it created for five bucks or do it myself. Just to be honest with you. And in this economy, I mean, it's not like anyone's trying to pay that kind of money for a logo anyways. Anyways, so moving on. Logo. Um, I see a bunch of logos that look cool, but I just want to... Um, Get a budget of five bucks. Let's see here. Apply. And the cool part about this is, is like a lot of people shy away from trusting some of these. Um, uh, what do you call them? Freelancers. Uh, but I believe that if you read the reviews and if you are very specific about what you are offering, I mean, about what you want, then they're going to get the job done. You can't be like, create me a logo that like looks pretty, which is honestly what a lot of people tend to do when instead you could simply do one of the following. I am, let's see, I'm in Charlotte. I want to find, I want to see what my competitors are in Charlotte. Char if I'm a plumber, Charlotte plumber. And in, in another video, we're going to be talking about what the Google Guaranteed is. It's a better for trades specifically. It's better for um, it's it's like Google ads, but you're not getting screwed with clicks. Essentially, people have to submit a form or pick up the phone and call you. And that is considered a um, a uh, they would be charging you on that, not uh, the actual ad cost so you have benjamin franklin the funk the punctual plumber uh you know here's their logo and if you were so inclined to want to have something similar like this like maybe you want to pick george washington plumbing or abraham lincoln plumbing or martin luther king plumbing i don't know i don't know if that's if that's the trademark but you're gonna have to do your research on that part but in terms of something with this frame i would take this particular benjamin franklin logo that you are in love with and be like, Hey, let's see if this guy has some good, some good stuff. Cockatee seems interesting. Uh, we have a sword with, I was, I was sold on the cockatee one. That one was pretty cool. I don't necessarily care much for like, you know, these, but these just seem like very simple ones. Um, and it depends on how dynamic you want to go. Uh, but I do like this portion where, you know, he shows you what it could possibly look like for branding and the fact that you can get a lot of this stuff for relatively cheap. I mean, a premium price is 125. Uh, I wouldn't use that. To be honest with you, let's see here. Let's try this one. Five local proposals. I think you could get a lot with one local proposal, but I would take that Benjamin Franklin plumbing, add it to Fiverr for $5 and boom, you are now good to go on a 
logo. Now, next we're going to be talking about is getting a website, setting that up, and then testing the website out. And I'm going to explain to you what testing the website out means. So you have an understanding of where things go, and such and so forth. All right. So if you haven't already, uh, make sure you, uh, if, if you're looking at getting, using this platform, um, there's a link down below. And if you click on that, it's a 14 day free trial to check out, uh, go high level. I'm also going to be providing you with the website templates for plumbing, roofing, and pest control down below. Just some that I had created, um, as templated websites. And essentially, um, what I'm going to be showing you is what it means to get a website and then have it tested out and then also optimizing that website for SEO in your area. Cause it's very important to understand that, you know, just because you put your website up on Google doesn't mean, I mean, excuse me, on the internet doesn't mean that, uh, it's optimized for Google. And there are a bunch of different ways that I could show you how uh, to show you what a optimize SEO friendly website looks like. And really, honestly, there's one way to show you, uh, there's, there's really not many. Um, but first I'm going to show you websites and I'll get into what an SEO website looks like. Uh, so first let's do, uh, the bug buster one just cause we're on that. All right. Experts in pest control, schedule a service, get your free quote. Now let's just talk about the framework of a website. What exactly are, what is a website? You know, like what is this thing? It's the first question that we need to understand what it's doing. It is a vehicle for people to online to, or really a, a digital location where people can come visit your, your house, your business and you know, easily see your service, go in, get that transaction of that service. So, you know, I obviously have a need. I, I have fleas in my house or whatever, and I need someone to come in and I'm going to pay them money for them to come in and fix the problem that I have. And with the internet, now you're able to attract people from large areas not only then you're just neighborhood or wherever you're physically marketing at, you can put a website up and you can have different city locations that essentially, um, attract business owners from different areas, not just in the area that you're in. And that's really important for scaling. Um, we'll, we'll go more into that later on, but, uh, this website, um, is very straightforward. A lot of these things, uh, in terms of calls now, it's going to, it's just a template, but understanding, making sure that the buttons still work and is the main view window telling me exactly what I need to know about this business. I know that it's experts in pest control and that we're going to be, if I need to schedule a service, I can click on that specific button there. If I need to get a free quote, I can also do that now free quotes or scheduling services, a lot of them is going to be getting a form. And it's just because that's where this era is going, making sure that the form that you, they have filling out goes somewhere and goes somewhere that someone would be able to see it easily, whether that's through an email, like some of submits a form, does that email go anywhere? Does that email go anywhere important? Does that email go anywhere where as soon as they fill it out, you're able to be like, oh, I just got, you know, some business. Or does that go to a virtual assistant? And we'll talk about what a virtual assistant is and, and how to hire one and, and where to hire one specifically and how much you can get one for and what exactly they're used for. Because they, my opinion, can be very useful for the, the small business owner because it's like having an assist, an, an office lady but or man um, that is managing all of your stuff without necessarily managing all of your stuff. And you could, you know, limit them based off of, you know, access to certain things. There's, there's so many different apps. One password is one of them. There's last pass as well. Um, two way factor authentication. And a lot of these people are honestly good, genuine people. So they're not out here to take your passwords and run. Um, but anyways, so 
get the website, test it out, make sure the forms work, make sure that there's a, the, it's an SSL certificate. It's locked in there. Uh, send it to a couple of your friends and family members and have them vet it out. And that's what I did with my website. Um, so that before I started marketing to people, I'm not coming back and having someone say, Hey, uh, you know what? Like this link doesn't work. Um, we like, for example, in, in my company, we, uh, do the best that we can to make sure that the websites that we produce are, um, completely perfect. They don't, there's no, you know, bad, uh, you know, any errors if you click on a button or anything like that. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're working with code and we're working with different pathways to different areas on the website. So sometimes you forget. And it's just important as a business owner to make sure that you specifically go and take the one time just to go and click on every button and make sure it works because that's what a customer is going to do. And it's your business at the end of the day. So if you're building a website yourself, make sure that every button works. If you're getting someone to build a website for you, still make sure that every website button works before you start launching it out. Um, it's just, it, it takes five, 10 minutes to just go through that. Your website shouldn't really be that big or it shouldn't be that in, it, like in depth, you know, in reality, you know, home about us, service page, service pages. Uh, Hey, this is what I've done for people page, you know, testimonials and the contact page. Uh, well, maybe like a discovery form page is another one. That's what I have for my website in order to gain, get information from someone. So next thing I'm going to be doing is getting into, uh, in terms of building out your pages for SEO purposes. So, uh, if you're a business owner in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, how I would market my business is I would have the main page be home. And, uh, what I mean by that is it would be generic to my business, but it wouldn't have necessarily any city pages anything city in the, if I'm, if I'm a business owner, that's looking to grow past my local market. That's what I mean. Um, if you're just trying to stay local, pick the city that you want and, you know, focus on that. And not saying you can't change it later on, but, uh, if you're thinking long-term and want to have a broader, broader reach, then this is what I recommend doing. Um, but let's go into the website builder because it's going to allow me to show you um, SEO wise how you would go about building out the web pages. Now, the one thing I try to when when teaching SEO is tell business owners do not think like a business owner, think like a consumer. And consumers are toddlers; they're children. And that's really the best way to look at it. It's like, I need something and I need it now. So you go on the website, you go on Google or Bing or um, uh, is, I don't know if Yes Jeeves is a thing anymore, but I don't think it is. Or Ask Jeeves, I think that was one of them. But uh, you go on the search engine and you type in pest controls near me or uh, help me. I have bugs in my house, what do I do? Or people are asking questions, you know, because it's a search engine. It's a place for someone to access information. Uh, so we have to position SEO based off of how someone would type in keywords that relate to our business. So let's go into the SEO metadata. If I was a pest control expert, um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go on pest control, Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm going to take a look at all the different, um, pest control competitors that we have on here and just get an idea of what kind of keywords people are searching for. So we have Charlotte, North Carolina, pest control. So that's a keyword that we could use. I'm going to steal that one. Noosa Pest Control. And what I can do actually is take this. This is a cool um, free, by the way, SEO tool. I'll put that link in the description down below. Um, but essentially, 
you're able to see what people are, um, what other websites are using to position their uh, websites onto the front page. I'm going to exit out of some of these because we don't need them anymore. So I know that um, this particular website is on page one. And as you can see, it's very simple. Charlotte Pest Control, call now, text now. Very simple. If you need help, we're here to do it. And looks like they might be, are they using Podium? That's pretty cool. Um, so essentially, call now, text now. They have keep your family safe from harmful, um, harmful chemicals. Very simple and easy. They can click on this button and see if it works. Cool. I'm not going to call them because I don't want to. But, um, and you could also text them. And it's straightforward. They also have, I'm pretty sure this is an H1 tag from as a main. An H1, just having one on the main page is necessary for um, SEO purposes. Not going to necessarily get into that. Pest control, as you can see. Where is Charlotte? Charlotte on here. Pest control right there. I think it's a three word. Charlotte Pest Control. Okay. Anyway, so we, uh, so this is where you'd be able to edit the um, SEO data and making sure that you have a tube and then putting the brand name. Let's do exterminator here and see if there's any other keywords that we can use. Charlotte Exterminator was the other one I found. Where is it at? Charlotte Exterminator. Use that one. Then my company name. Done. That's how you would set up the SEO title specifically for your website. Um, your website SEO titles and talking about specifically city specific. If you wanted to do it where it was just branded out for the homepage and then create city pages, you would just simply take this out, take that out, pest control, exterminator, and your business name. And then uh, let me update this real quickly. I'm not going to get too much into the SEO just because I, I, I want to keep going on just because there's still more to talk about. Um, but let me wait till we get to so loading really quickly. But it's very simple and easy to clone this, move it to the correct one. Clone, move it to the plumber section and have it in the specific site. And you'll easily be able to do that. Um, let's see, Buckster. Clone, easily, and then boom, it's done. So what's going to happen next is sometimes you have to refresh a page and you'll then be able to see it show up. Um, so as you can see, very easy to clone the page, go to settings, you could change the path and also the name. So if I wanted to change it to Charlotte, you know, let's control like before and et cetera. And then also the path can also be tailored. Remember we talked about the UMAC principle, URL, metadata, anchor text, contact, I mean, anchor text, and then content making sure that the path specifically can also have keywords littered in there as well. So maybe it's Charlotte Pest Control, North Carolina, bugster.com slash Charlotte Pest Control, North Carolina, e-tech. Um, and, and, and yeah, and then that's how you would essentially set up your SEO for your website for your specific area. Now we're going to be going into Stripe and essentially what Stripe is, it's a payment processing platform. It allows 
small businesses of any size to be able to collect and accept payments as well as you know, uh, well collect and accept payments really on the internet and it makes it seamless to be able to integrate it to really any type of system um especially a crm um and the crm that i'm going to be using once again is go high level crm because it's once again an all-in-one marketing platform uh and you're able to integrate Stripe directly into the CRM so you can accept payments and connect that information to your business, making your business more efficient. Now, a lot of people tend to uh, look at the price of the transaction charge and like, oh, well, I don't want to pay for the 2.9% plus 30% transaction fee. Like, well, understand this, that you can always allocate for the cost um, and pack it in with the price of your services. Uh, and put that um, component onto your client. On top of that, with uh, Stripe, you're able to collect, or excuse me, capture the card, which is essential for the movement and flow of your business. On If you have a reoccurring uh, lawn maintenance and you know that you're supposed to be meeting with them twice a week on a Monday, you don't wanna have to be sending out an invoice after you finish the, your job every Monday and not getting paid till Thursday or Friday. The, the setup should be after the job is done, you go on your phone, which Stripe has that capability, where the card would have already been captured. It's already on there. And you're this is a customer that you've been working with for a while and you collect the payment. Everything's good. The customer says, hey, thank you for business. I like what you did. You collect the payment and move on with your life. Stripe's very important because it has a very, very intricate design and and can be customized for any type of business owner when it comes to any type of payment. So I definitely recommend Stripe. I'm going to be showing you exactly where that can be integrated and all of those things now. So in the settings of Go High Level, you simply have to uh, click on the settings portion right here. And you would go to the integration section and you would integrate Stripe easily. You use Stripe Connect and it doesn't really matter that you need to know anything about the fact that they're just going to, it's like a really seamless process, honestly, when it comes down to it. So um, after you've you know signed up for a Stripe account, uh, you all you simply need to do is integrate it into your the dashboard and then from there you would be able to start accepting and processing payments uh there's a payment section specifically for um any type of business and uh, where you can create all the products you know lawn maintenance where and right now there's no stripe connection found but all your invoices would be in here orders transactions so you could see um, the different types of things going through your business, um, you know, depending on what you're selling or, or, or offering, digital products or not, all that would be in here. Different, um, if you wanted to create a product, specifically the name, product, uh, product description, is it a service, a physical good, digital good, what the product specifically looks like, and all the pricing and stuff there. Once that stuff is, is set up and done, you're able to essentially, um, you know, if you're a landscaper, how I would set it up is after say someone comes to my website and submits a form that they want lawn maintenance or they want some me to go mow their lawn or something like that. It's just, I'm just going to be basic right now. They, Hey, I I'm Johnny Doe and I want you to come uh, mow my lawn for, you, you know, and I want it to be done on this date. I'd be like, all right, cool. I would pick up the phone using dialer, but I forgot to mention that there's also a phone system so you can get your own phone number added um, really easy by resolving right here. you get on this phone system. Hey, Johnny, do how you doing? My name is, you know, you know, Colin Osborne, the landscaper. And so that she submitted a request, uh, yada, yada, yada. I would like to, you know, come out and do this, whatever the case is, you know, you're you sell your, your landscaping services, uh, guy agrees. You go out and do the service. He likes it. You send him an invoice. Once that invoice is done, all that, that, his credit card information has been captured and placed into Stripe. You're probably wondering, um, oh, well, are you allowed to do that? 
You are the Federal Trade Commission has also said merchants shouldn't collect information they don't need. You're just collecting the information you do need. So just remember that that information is very important for you, the, the maintenance and efficiency of running your business. All right, next compor- um, components of is going to be marketing your business. Uh, we all know about social media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok. All those things are, are essential for running a business, but it also helps when you don't have to log on to every single account and post from every single account. Now, there's different apps out there and different, you know, companies like Hootsuite and um, I forget what the other one is called. It's really expensive. Um, Sprout Social. And they're very good and provide a lot of great analytical reports and stuff like that. I don't necessarily feel like it's super, uh, like, important for a starting out small business to be you know, if you're just, if you're a landscaper or plumber, or electrician, and you're starting on your own to be um, necessarily managing your social media analytics, you just need a place where you can post, Hey, this is what I did. And, and this, these are the people that said I did it and show your work and, and be done with it and, and move on and be able to essentially schedule them out as far as you need them. Uh, the nice part about go high level, once again, is you can integrate Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Two, in terms of social posting. And then from there, as you can see, I have an entire um, month's worth of posts scheduled out already. And it posts every day at 7 a.m. Uh, and that's the beauty of with, with, with this software, this system, is that you're able to essentially do a lot of the things that you want to do yourself before you then go and hire out either a marketing company or hire another person to do all this stuff for you, depending on how you want your business to evolve. Also understanding your audiences, you know, what type of content is going to be needed for the part, like whatever, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, you know, Facebook being is, is more of an older audience. So you're going to be, you know, posting more content that is like, look what I did material. If like a, a landscaper client of mine, he gets a lot of um, it's not client. Uh, one of my best friends, he's a, uh, landscaper, uh, in Charlotte. He, uh, does a lot of Facebook posts about, look what I did here. And he gets a lot of clients from just posting, you know, small little testimonials and pictures of his work. You gotta, you gotta be a, a, a promoter of your own work. And that's one thing I myself have failed to do at times is, promoting this is what I've done for someone and talking about your business and letting people know what you do in a very, very simple and concise manner. Instagram being more focused on culture and personality of the company interviews about, you know, like maybe about like what you've done, um, little small, little tiny pictures of also showing your work as well, but also the country culture and personality of the uh, business. Also, it's creating a newsletter. One thing that I think is very essential is email marketing and not necessarily, and I'm not going to get into outbound, but specifically people who have interacted with your business at some point in, in a way, someone contacted, submitted a contact form and you called them and they didn't pick up the fo- the phone. At least there, there would be some way of adding them to your newsletter so that they know what you do and can, you can keep them on top of your mind for later on. Um, and I'm going to be showing you exactly how that's done. Be a lot of people use companies like MailChimp or, um, I think it's active campaign is another one. Uh, but the beautiful part about go high level is that information. I mean, that process, that system is also inside of go high level. And I'm going to be showing you a, a very, very easy, newsletter template that you can follow um, for your business in order to know exactly what people really honestly want to hear from a newsletter from a small business owner. All right. So inside the go high level system, they have automations and workflows. And depending on which platform you signed up for, I believe the basic one is like $97. And I don't think you have access to automation, but the agency section allows you to um, have more of a uh, 
access to social media. And it's only two ninety seven per month to be able to, to do that. Um, which to have everything condensed into one platform, it's not really that um, high cost of a, of a margin, in my opinion. Um, anyways, going to uh, the newsletter section, just to kind of show you what we have done specifically. Um, we created a newsletter, I think is about 22 emails long. But in reality, you don't need to have, uh, I would consider having about, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 emails r- roughly created that, in in my opinion, are very easy to manipulate and um, set up. And we got to look at the psychology behind what a newsletter is. A newsletter is slowly telling a customer about yourself in order to keep them on top of mind. So if I was signing up for a newsletter, if I submitted a form and I got a newsletter, I'm assuming that the first email that I'm going to get is probably going to be something about who who the business is. So, hi, this is who I am email. Hi, we are, you know, John Jones Landscaping. We saw that you interacted with our contact us form. Just wanted to say we're keeping you top of mind. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to, you know, send us an email back here which by the way, that email, which is sent out of the system would converge back into the conversation portal. I'm going to show you exactly um, that section and how you can keep that condensed because all of your social media and email and text information can be pointed all into that platform right there so that you're able to essentially communicate from one device as well. And they have an app so you can um, communicate with your business, with your clients from your phone, but not necessarily from like, like giving out your personal number to everyone. Cause that's, it's not necessarily very fun to get calls from your clients at 2 AM in the morning on your personal phone, rather your business phone. And you could have hours and, you know, limit people. Well, it's basically setting up boundaries, essentially what's coming down to, but essentially this is what a newsletter campaign looks like. And there's a lot of, like um, the nice part about it is that they have um, email deliverability status. So you can see uh, essentially what the, like how well did your website did. You can see, in t- I mean, how well your email did. You can see, um, for example, what I'm doing is I'm explaining to my customers exactly what the system does, what, what it, what it does. Excuse me. And the nice part about it is, is that uh, you can kind of get an idea of what your email will look like via mobile device. And also in the builder, you can build it out to be because there's an actual email template build. I'll show you what that guy show you what that looks like. So clicking on marketing, you're going to go to the email section and then templates. And then let's just go. And I have folders created for a lot of my um, emails just to keep things more easier to, uh, it's easier to access and find, in my opinion. Let me. All right, here is what the folder looks like for the email newsletter templates. It doesn't have to be this long. I just recommend having, you know, every week, one email going out to your customer base, just explaining, Hey, this is who I am. This is what I, this is what I'm about. This is what my services are. Let me know if you need me, uh, when, and then things like, Hey, if you're in this situation, this is a place, uh, this is a time when you can hire me. When to hire me part two, when to hire me part three, offering a special deal so that you are competitive in the market and then having a last chance, providing some scarcity, depending on like at the end of the month. And then it's very easy to take literally one day out of the out of the month and redo some of those uh, the special deal on last chance in order to once again, stay competitive in the market. So really, truly, you're managing four different emails. Um, and I'm going to show you what that, you know, what that, that builder actually looks like. So 
So real simple, just like the website builder, it's very easy, drag and drop, Oslon. Um, you can put a bar here, add content, add pictures, you click this done button. Text, images, buttons, dividers, that's where this divider is. You can add social icons, I have this down here with the clickable links. And then also there is URL mapping code. I'm not gonna get too much into that because um, that's in another video. But anytime this email sends, it autofills this information. And you could, like right here as well, if I send this to 100 people, everyone that's in my database, because I have first and last names, it's gonna be, hi John, hi Kara, hi Kim, hi John, hi Lois, hi Mary Beth, and so on and so forth. And it makes it easy for still kind of being able to send out personalized messages. So um, hopefully you guys find this very exciting because this stuff is essentially runs on its own. When anyone interacts with my contact us form, they immediately get all of these emails and it makes it look like I'm way bigger than I'm actually am, but also keeps me, keeps them, um, keeps them top of mind whenever they, uh, um, are in the need for a website, you know, it helps them know that I exist. That's what marketing is. It's, it's existing, telling people, Hey, this is what I do. All right, so next thing I'm gonna be talking about is Google My Business. It's very important because Google My Business is essentially the, is your sanctuary to getting and beginning business in your local community. It's very important to have an active flow of reviews coming to your business. And look, your, your reputation is, is everything. Uh, especially in the trades industry, if you have a bad reputation, then, you know, and that's not like, I don't necessarily like to work with clients that have like, you know, three, two or three stars because I don't want to promote a bad business. Uh, so, you know, for anyone who, um, you know, is, is, you know, just make sure that you're promoting good quality services out there because at the end of the day, you're all you're really doing is hurting yourself. Um, you're going to be the marketing company that promoted that or, or you're going to be the business that is promoting a bad service or essentially. Um, but anyways, not, not, not to go negative, but, um, Google, my business is very important because it'll, it allows you to collect reviews and show people that you've done it before. And a lot of that stuff is also going to be automated and integrated into go high level. It's very simple and easy, but I'm not going to necessarily explain how to create a Google My Business profile. But I will show you what the benefits of having a good quality Google My Business profile is and how it can affect your SEO specifically. I have a restaurant client and they are on page one. Uh, they're right here, number five. But then also they show up on number what is it let's see from the top these are two ads these don't count one two three four from the top and we did a whole range of seo services from citations as well as building out the google my business page so they could show up on there and you know they have an, a, a nice stream of reviews 761 that's more than you know the majority of these other restaurants up there um, and you know, the list goes on. I know there's a next door business consultant. There's another one. Uh, grateful box, for example, right here, they sell next door business consulting services and, uh, making sure that you have a nice citation, uh, campaign and citations are just backlinks. Um, you can honestly just go and, uh, go online and do a quick watch a couple of YouTube videos and understand exactly what that is. But just think of like having your, <clears throat> excuse me, having your website on Apple maps, yellow pages, uh, different directories, white pages, um, Yelp. Uh, those are different. And, and Google, my business is obviously a directory as well to a degree. Um, but Google, my business is the most powerful one. You know, everyone trusts Google before they trust anything else. So it's making sure that you have, a uh, reputation, being able to showcase that, and then also being able to integrate it so that it's automated. And I'm going to show you how to do that next. All right. So here's the back end of 
um, an Italian restaurant. And you're able to essentially, after you've created your um, Google My Business account, you would just simply connect your Google account, sign in with Google here, and then that information is going to flow into the uh, system. So once you've signed in, it's very simple, straightforward. You'll be able to have your a picture, have the information there set up so that anytime a review gets sent out, thank you for being a loyal customer at Mario's. You'd be so kind, leave us a five-star review. That would be fantastic. And then click on the bit link and move forward. Same thing as, a, as an email and a text. And I'm going to show you how to have this particular session automated so that you're not necessarily worried about sending out these reviews anymore. They're just coming in all the time. All right. So in this section, this is a, a, the automation and workflow section. And this is where automation comes really handy because, you know, back in the day, people were literally taking hand letters, which still can be a thing. You could automate that as well, too. But handwritten letters where you send them out and ask for review. Um, nowadays, you can do that through Google My Business and integrate it so that it's automated within your system. So what we have here is essentially different if and then but statements. I mean, if you remember from fifth grade science, if if this happens, then this will happen. <clears throat> so based off of what you want, if we wanted to have a form in here, for example, that was submitted, maybe I want to have, uh, and I'm just going to add the filter form is plumber get a quote form. So after they fill out this form, then in, let's just say, I want to have it so that they fill out the form or maybe it's a it's a specific form of a contract form where you know that the business has either that like transaction has been made or there's an intention for a transaction you could have it timed up so that after the service is done maybe 24 hours after the after the service has been you know you could set it up through an appointment system where after the appointment has been made then um, a review would be set up or if a form was submitted, it would be set up. And there's different ways that you can go about doing it. But just to be simple, let's just say a form was, was submitted. You'd be able to simply um, move this over here, have a wait signal here. Oops, I want to move this. Okay, so um, event appointment. So there's a bunch of different things you can do. You can do time delay, event slash appointment time, or overdue, depending on you know what the automation is. But specifically, we'll just do time delay. You can break it up between minutes, hours, and days. And I would just ask for a review 24 hours after the service has been completed. It just makes it easier, keeps them top of mind. And this essentially is a system used to create an automation for reviewing, um, for getting reviews. All right, so now we are finally on to the last portion, which is networking your, like networking what you do. Now that you have this, you have the website up, you have a form, You've already gotten a couple of reviews from your family and, fr and friends because they know that you're good at what you do and you just, you know, need some social proof there, obviously. Um, you've gotten your the SSL certificate set up. You've positioned yourself in your local community with SEO so that when you start to do more business and you start connecting and grabbing those backlinks from um, different sources based off of who you do business with, uh, your website will be positioned to rank or show up higher in the search results in your local community. But it's very important that that's not the only thing that you should be doing when it comes to networking. You should be networking in person as well. It's very important to, um, or in person or, you know, and when I mean in person, um, I mean, like you can physically be at a BNI and they also have BNIs virtually in some places. Um, and there's other things that I'm gonna be showing you as well. But one of the first things I did when I started my company in 2018 was I joined a BNI because I knew that I couldn't 
learn everything that I needed to learn about business ownership without actually being around other business owners. And my business developed from, um, you know, just only offering SEO to then offering web development SEO and CRM management services. Uh, so um, understanding kind of where, you know, like it's very important that, you know, not necessarily that a BNI is the main uh, source of income, but I definitely believe it's a place where you can build a lot of good friendships, a lot of um, uh, you know, business contacts. There's a commitment. Um, it's honestly kind of like a, uh, uh, what do you call it? A cult. It's kind of, they have a cultish behavior, but only in a good way. Everyone's there for a cause and everyone wants to make money. And a lot of people make money off each other. When I was in my BNI group, I, uh, I had did a lot of business with, um, a digital graphics company and a IT company, um, and a landscaping company. Uh, whether it was web development, SEO, social media, um, there were also restaurants. So, um, the sky's the limit when it's, when it comes to BNI in terms of just literally going out there and presenting your business. Now, the scary part about it is, is that you need to be able to present yourself, you know, like, like a, like who you are. If you're a landscaper, make sure you have a good speaking knowledge about what it means to, to cut lawn. If you're a plumber, know how to lay pipe. You know what I'm saying? It's just the, it, it's knowing your craft so that when you go up in front and, you know, how a BNI normally works is, is they'll let you come the first three times for free. And then after that, it's usually like a $500 initiation fee. And my, it, I think it depends on which business you decide to, uh, which BNI you decide to go to. But it was kind of dope. It would be every Thursday. You meet up with a bunch of business owners. I My BNI was a Ballantine chapter, so. They had breakfast every morning, coffee and all this sort of stuff. You just get to sell your business and talk to business owners. I mean, it was honestly a very exciting time just to be there and network all the time and, and figure out the best ways to grow your business. And you have these things called one on one. So it's it's honestly like the perfect segue into business if you've never been into business before. But it is also competitive. So understand that if there's another plumber in the BNI group that you're trying to go into you won't be able to get into it so a lot of times they either start new chapters depending on how big the city is or you essentially have to wait um or not get in depending on which bni chapter you go into like for example the bni chapter i went into i could not sell websites to a degree i had to and i i, I did a little bit um to to some clients, but you're really not supposed to because the person who was in web development, you know, she got mad at me a couple of times for like doing some website websites. But, you know, at the end of the day, like I'm out here just trying to grind. So that's like someone says, Hey, can you do a website for me? I mean, it's a website for me. I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say, Oh, give it to this person. You know, that's, you know, uh, self-preservation. Um, so BNI is very essential, uh, and you know it's a it's a big community of of committed business owners who either they will be doing business with you or they know people who would want to do business with you. Um, but you got to do the one on ones. You got to take the time to actually uh, communicate with those uh, business owners, and you know whether uh, it's an IT company or a landscape or a realtor. And realtors are really big in the BNI community because you essentially get business from everyone because if you see your BNI members succeeding, they're eventually going to want to buy a house and who are they going to buy a house from you? It's almost like oblig you're almost obligated to do it. And also there's sometimes I'll say the only thing I didn't like about BNI was that there was a shame component to it. It's like, if you didn't show up, you couldn't, you like, it's almost like working a job. Um, Cause if you didn't show up, you would get like, bammed and and we say bam at the naval academy because i don't exactly know what the affiliation is with the word but it just means you get like penalized and eventually if you stop showing up they'll kick you out the group and it's just i don't know i feel like you should be able to, i mean it's a commitment really is what it is so that's real i'm gonna get on that but bni is a great group show up um there's different locations around uh the world let's just see well, around the United States specifically, but let's just, if I wanted to find a chapter, I was in the Valentine Connections chapter. 
If anyone's watching this video and is from Ballantine, BNI Ballantine Connects, uh, what's up? Okay. And honestly, the way I found my BNI chapter was through meetup.com. I didn't actually go through the um, chapter. Uh, and I'm going to be showing you meetup.com right now. You can fill out this information and it'll take you exactly where you need. All right, meetup.com. Meetup.com is essentially just another social media platform, but people post job, you know, meetups or, you know, it's the Airbnb for events. I mean, that's probably the best way to describe it. You can be a, it's not like Eventbrite where it almost feels like you kind of have to be more like mainstream, but, you know, I could host me right now. I could host a online virtual workshop about SEO and then post a link and people would come in and show up. And honestly, that right there is probably a good idea that, you know, you could use to get clients just from that specific app. If you wanted to specifically talk about, um, you know, HVAC or plumbing or elect uh, electricity, you know, electrician or, you know, a painter, whatever the case is. Um, so B and I meet up. Though, and, and honestly, like if I was to recommend it, tradesmen get so much business from BNIs. I mean, it's insane how much business there. It was like dudes in there literally walking out, making like two, three thousand dollars every time they had a because there's always like, especially if you connect with like a realtor in there. Oh, my God. They literally feed them. I was just I mean, when I when I first started, I was like kind of struggling because you have to build up a credibility of. SEO and web and web development. So I'm seeing my counterpart who is just rolling in the dough because her realtor clients like, Oh, I got someone who needs to do this, or I got someone who needs to do that. And he just didn't have enough time to even, you know, like keep his, his head above water because he was just working all the time. So, um, definitely is beneficial to the certain type of industry specifically. And last but not least, we're going to be talking about Facebook groups. Um, and uh, like, for example, in the area, there are different Facebook groups where it's honestly like an online neighborhood community. I'm going to be showing you guys one specifically. All right. So this is a um, Facebook group in Ballantyne and it's, and it's got a bunch of members. And this is a place where a lot of people promote to a degree or you know, offer advice and stuff like that. But there are a lot of different ways where you can, you know, get business and um, you always teach them a trick and ways where you can communicate with people when they post their problems or oh, I have a pipe leak. What do I do? Yada, yada, the cases an hour a day. It literally takes an hour a day for you to do a little bit of prospecting and find people that have problems because that's where your job. I mean, you became a plumber because you wanted to lay pipe and, and fix people's problems. Um, so. Uh, that's where another place, another method of getting um, clients and networking. Anyways, guys, I hope this was very beneficial. And um, once again, if you have not already, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. I would love to hear um, more information about how this was beneficial and uh, what you'd like to hear from me. Um, in the next video, I'm going to be talking about how to set up a brand email address for your for your um, uh, company. And essentially, that's getting a Google Workspace account and then the process of setting up the name servers for that. And then um, so that you instead of having, you know, um, Pacman Jones one, two, three at gmail.com. You know, it's now it's, you know, Brian plumbing at well, Brian at plumbing, Brian dot com. I don't know, something like that, you know, like the brand email address. So it looks official. Got to make sure things are official. And it's very cheap. It's only like five dollars. But anyways, once again, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And I thank you for watching this long video, but I hope it was very beneficial and you have a good day. This is technology at work.